My name is Josh, and I'm an engineer with Forge Product Development. Forge helps clients start and grow their businesses by providing affordable access to effective engineering resources. Monday through Friday, we offer a free engineering helpline live on our social media platforms, where we help answer questions from people just like you. The clips that follow were taken from one of those sessions. I hope you find it useful and enjoy. All right, so let's do this one. Um, so we actually did this one in a previous live session, but I deleted the video and um, somebody's asked for an uh, individual video showing my technique on it. Um, okay, so the premise is, this is kind of like a CAD challenge that you'll see um, sometimes. So somebody puts up a model and then they provide a final weight um, and then you can check whether or not your model um, matches what they put up um, based on the uh, mass. Um, so this one is unique in that they are providing a, an STL file. Um, which is normally what you find if you're working with 3D prints and stuff like that. People will put up STLs instead of like a parasolid or a step file, which is um, usually cleaner geometry. And so what you get is you get this faceted version of the model as opposed to what you'd see in SolidWorks, which would be cleaner surfaces. Um, so we're going to reverse engineer this part from the STL that they provided. Uh, and I'll show my technique and how I went about it. And then uh, we can check the final um, model, how close we are to the original by um, checking our, our final mass. Um, so what you do is you, um, if you wanna follow along, you can go to this page and search up this question. And then if you scroll down, there is a link where you can download the scan. And so I've downloaded it already. Now, one of the tips I'm going to give you is when you go to open this file, you want to open it um, from within SolidWorks. You want to use um, SolidWorks open or SolidWorks is open command. So you want to open and then you want to navigate to the folder. So navigate to wherever it comes in at, and then you're gonna click it, and then this options is gonna pop up. And they provided, or they told you what units it's going to be in, um, or what the STL is. So STL doesn't give you um, dimensions. It only has, instead of saying one inch, in an STL file, it just says one. And you have to tell um, the software that you open the STL on what unit that one digit is in. Um, so they told us that the units are in millimeters. So we want to double check that and then we'll open it. Okay, so this is what we get as our uh, low quality STL, which is typical of a low quality STL. Um, you can see that the edges have been rounded off and it almost looks like there have been chamfers applied um, in the question definition. Um, they say, don't worry about chamfers or edges, make everything sharp. So we're gonna ignore that, but we still have to be able to draw the faces and planes and features um, from the geometry that they've provided. All right, so we're going to save it. All right, and now we can uh, go to work on it. So right plane, we're gonna sketch. And I'm going to draw the geometry that I want first, which is going to be this main body block. I'm just going to sketch it out and then I will um, go in and constrain the geometry using points from the STL. So I'm just selecting the lines that I know are perfect now. I know that they're oriented the way that we want. And then selecting points from the STL file that define the faces and constraining them, the lines to those points. So for this line here, since there are uh, since it's an angle, we'll need two points. Pick up something down here. Like that. So now we can extrude. And we can see that the, um, the origin 
of uh, the STL files here. So we'll design our part in the same way and keep the origin in the same spot. So we're gonna extrude and we're gonna extrude up to a point or up to a vort vertex. Let's see here, right here, perfect. All right, so we're gonna change the color of our solid body just so we can see it a little bit better. All right, so next up we're gonna do this, um, we're gonna do this offset surface here, this half round type of thing. And for that, we're gonna make a plane. Um, so we can go and we can define a plane. And in order to find a plane in 3D space, we need three points. So we got one here. I'm trying to pick points that are on the plane. One here and Yeah, we can pick the midpoint, sure. Midpoint. There we go. Now, since we know that this is offset from this plane as well, we probably could have used this ever as a reference and just done two points. Um, but I, I think it's fine. I think it's accurate enough for what we need. But just something to keep in mind. So we'll do a sketch, same technique. Same technique. We'll draw our shape. And we'll define it once we know that our geometry is correct. So we know we want this edge here to come down and be on this edge. So what we're going to do is we're going to reference our previous sketch so that we know the edges are perfect. So we'll do that. And as you can see, it passes through right, right through that point. Okay. And then for the circle, same thing. Features will extrude. We'll just do up to next. All right, so same technique, and we can show the um, the other way to define a plane in this one. So we'll know that for drawing this large feature here, we want it to be, say, um, parallel, or the plane to be uh, in reference to this front plane. So now we'll only need two points like this. We can see that plane's defined. And we'll go into it and we'll sketch. And we're gonna put our that center circle. We're gonna we're not going to assume that it is um, it's concentric. We could if we knew more about the part or we could just make the assumption that's concentric, but we're going to, I'm gonna show you how to do the circle, which is very similar to doing all of these lines. And then here, we want it to be collinear with the edge. All right, so doing a circle, there's actually a pretty good way to do a circle and it gives you a three point circle. Uh, actually, I take that back. We'll just do a regular circle and then we're gonna define the points um, on this feature, using this feature. Just like that. I only grabbed two. Must have clicked off. So there you go. We'll do features.
the next. There we go. We'll just use that same sketch again. And extrude going the other way. And up to vertex. There we go. So now we can hide all of our sketches. Clean up the model. Hide our planes. And we can hide the surface body, which is what the STL was imported as. And now we can say we have our part. So to double check our work, we're gonna apply the material that was specified in the um, in the directions. which was a 1060 alloy. And you can go right up here and search. If you didn't know it was aluminum. Okay, so we have a 1060 alloy applied to our body. And now we're just gonna go into evaluate and mass properties. And we can say we're, we're in pounds and we wanna change to millimeters. So we'll just change all your units for the, the part down here. Go back into mass properties. And you can see that we're at 3,005 grams and our final inch was supposed to be 3,005. So pretty darn close, uh, but that's how you do it. If this video was helpful, uh, please be sure to leave a like and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss out on future videos. Um, go and follow us on LinkedIn. We're trying to get 150 uh, followers over there so that we can live stream. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video and learned something. Have a good one.